Welcome back to AM Northwest. You know, alcoholics can refrain from drinking. Those with a substance use disorder can avoid drugs. But what if, uh, what if you do, if, you're, if your fixation is food? Here to share more about her memoir, more please, on food, fat, binging, longing, and the lust for enough. We welcome journalist Emma Spector. Good to have you with us, Hi, Emma. Hey, so great to be here. Thank you for having me. You bet. You call this the anti-diet book. Tell me about that. Well, that was actually a title that um, an interviewer, Jenna Mahal from Dazed, applied to the book, and I loved it so much that how could I not run with that kind yeah. of branding? Um, I think I've just spent so much time over the course of my life being inundated with diet messaging, as yes. I think a lot of people in the U.S. and around the world have, and I definitely spent some uneasy time feeling like I didn't want to diet because it didn't feel like the best, most feminist use of my time, but I did want to be thinner and it was complicated, so I don't want to... If dieting feels like a good or right choice to you, then I think that's great. Sure. Or, you know, any way we live in our body, find a way to peacefully live in our bodies is always good. But for me, I just, it feels really important to break free of some of those confines and just say my relationship with food is not going to be about abstention and constantly worrying anymore. Tell me about your childhood and your relationship with food as a child. Yeah, I mean, I had a, had a really cool childhood in the sense that I moved around a lot. My parents um, are, are journalists and... We lived in Moscow until I was five, and oh. Italy until I was eight, and then moved back to New York. And I was a very bratty child who um, refused to eat anything that basically wasn't plain pasta. I always wanted American food, uh -huh. even when we were in Italy and Russia, and there were all these exciting, you know, borscht and pastas right. to be sampled. I wanted plain pasta and Oreos, and I think I really. It's interesting because I feel like I was exposed to a lot more cultural attitudes around food than a lot of kids my age, just moving around so much. But somehow I still forged this relationship with food that felt very much about more to, yeah. to skillfully weave in the title of the book and um, felt very much about how can I get my hands on something that I'm maybe not supposed to have, which, you know, my parents weren't restrictive and weren't like, you can't have this or that. So it's hard for me even now to know where some of those restrictions came from, I think. We learn so young often that what we want is sort of in the bad category yeah. or that, you know, if you eat three of this candy instead of two, then the day is shot, so you might as well eat the whole package. Um, That's what we talk about binge eating. Yeah. Because um, I did that uh, as a young person as mm -hmm. well, binge purge. Yeah. So talk about right. that because then you eat to eat mm -hmm. a, and for the flavor and then you're in, you end up in a kind of like a, a stupor don't you it feels so much like a stupor i think yeah. that's such a good way to put it and every binge is different and certainly it's different for every person who engages in some of these eating habits but i do think it can for me very much be about shutting the world out and mm -hmm. sort of thinking okay it's been a stressful day or xyz has gone wrong or maybe you know you hear that acronym halt hungry angry lonely or tired and um, I think a lot of the times I was trying to feed my emotional needs more right. so than my physical ones and just sort of think, okay, well, I'm alone in my room with food. And individually, I think I felt like this is not the most harmful thing I could be perpetrating on myself or the world, but collectively it does add up to a lot of shutting the world out and a lot of money spent on food I didn't want and right. just a lot of time that I wish I had spent differently um, and maybe used to forge a relationship with my body that felt a little more positive. Well, and like alcoholics, you wake up with a regret in exactly. the morning. And I, especially when I was really committed to dieting, I think it felt very much like, okay, I wake up, I'm full of regret, I'm going to go back on my diet today, I'm yeah. only going to, you know, eat my little approved points foods and just have nothing but water. And then for me, at least, that is not a realistic way to eat or to feed myself. Right. Um, and then when I felt like I couldn't stick to my diet, I feel like the shame would really creep in. And the shame, more than anything else, is the biggest factor in my binging, the sense of I haven't managed my food right, so I might as well go completely go off right. and binge. You don't, you don't blame your mom for, for this no. situation. Um, but you did grow up because uh, our, at, for your mom's age, mm -hmm. my age, actually, you grow yeah. up. And, I mean, you, you live a life where you do have the diet pop and the, mm -hmm. the diet milkshakes and all of that kind of stuff. That's around your house. So you right. see that that's, that's the way your mother lives. And probably you're thinking, maybe that's how I should live. Absolutely. And I think hopefully with each consecutive generation of mothers and daughters, we're getting farther from the idea that you need to look a certain way in order to earn the things you want from life or from society. But 
I really don't. I think, especially for women my mom's age, I just don't think there were a lot of models of, God forbid, being a fat person right. as I am now and living a or happy life. Or being accepted as a fat or person. Or being accepted as a fat person. Yeah. Or even, you know, I just don't think there was a conversation around I engage with food and with sometimes exercise or, you know, different aspects of the disordered eating world in ways that hurt me. Yeah. And I just think it's hard to model something different for your kid if that's what you've been fed. How do you feel about the drugs out there now? I mean, like Ozempic, there are a number of yeah. other drugs out there. How do you feel about those? I feel, um, I don't want to be a knee jerk like semaglutide hater because I think, as I said, the shame can be such a, I think now we have a sort of rise of Ozempic shame and gossiping about which Holly, Hollywood celebrities are on it. And sure. I just think it adds to this idea that it's wrong to exist in a body that doesn't look quote unquote perfect, but it's also wrong to expend any energy on looking yeah. different because that's vain and it just leads us back to where we started. Um, the drugs aren't for me and that's something that my doctor told me. Um, just as a person with a history of disordered eating, she was like, I don't think this is the right thing for you. Okay. And I'm choosing to take that at face value. But I also, you know, I think I'm so committed to a model of body liberation in which everyone is hopefully has the resources to be the best judge of what works for their body. I think too that women grow grow up with the idea that if you aren't thin, you aren't gonna find love. Absolutely. You have love in your life. I do. And you're doing really well. Yeah, right? I feel so lucky and I think coming out as queer in my 20s was a big part of that as well and realizing how much of my kind of unconscious messaging around how my body should look was weighted towards like you need to find a, yeah. a cis het man to you know take care of you some very retrograde stuff right. that I didn't aware was floating around it wasn't aware was in my psyche at all but I, I, I don't think that queer and trans love is necessarily the balm that fixes everything but I do think stepping outside of what you might think you need to look like in order to find any version of love yeah. is a really important first step. Absolutely. You have a book event tonight at I Powell's, do. which is very exciting. So that's tonight at 7, Powell's City Books on 10th and West Burnside. We're going to put all the information for you on our website at khu.com. The book, again, is More, More Please, on food, fat, binging, longing, and the lust for enough. Emma Spector, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. You bet. All right, we'll be right back with more AM Northwest. Don't go away.